Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about my simple daily to-do list as a software engineer with the goal of maximizing productivity and minimizing waste. So I think life is made up of building blocks of time. Getting the daily block right is crucial to leading a productive and fulfilling life. I like building simple scalable systems as a means of codifying best practices to maximize impact while minimizing waste so that I can move on to other things. And so I've built my own 3S to-do list to try and give each day a good chance of success. Because again, if you can do the days right, then generally, you know, your longer term building blocks, your weeks, your months, your years, et cetera, all fall into place. Now, previously we've discussed how I schedule my days from like long-term plans to kind of hourly time blocks. And here we're gonna zoom just into the to-do list portion to give more context and perspective on why it is the way it is. First, let's start out with some observations on productivity. So my to-do list is a 3S solution based on a few core observations. We'll start with these observations to give context on why my to-do list takes the form it does. So what are the actual problems that it's solving? Why does it look like this versus like, you know, any other to-do list you might find? So my first observation is that work follows the power law. And so basically there's infinite work you can do. This can be in life, like chores you could do, adventures you could take, um, but also very much in like software engineering or business. There's like infinite tasks you could do, spreadsheets you could change, things you could improve. But the observation is that, you know, a very small percent of this is like actually impactful. So you could spend all your time doing, you know, these spreadsheet changes, but it might not actually be useful. And so this means that you can basically get the majority of the impact at work and in life for minimal cost by just focusing only on the top things. And this is very similar to like the 80-20 rule, and it really does apply to most domains, though of course not all. If you look at most domains on what is valuable, it's almost always a power law. And so if you can just focus on like the top 5% of things, the top 10% of things, you know, assuming all work or all items, you know, require around equal work, um, then you can basically chop off the 90% of work and you still get like, you know, 80, 90% of the value. So this is the first observation. The second one is that focus is actually finite. And so I like the saying, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. And the truth is that our resources, our time, energy, and money are finite and human brains are not very good at multitasking, um, which is why focus is so important. This is like the basis of deep work. There's been so many studies showing that multitasking feels productive, but actually is not. And what this means for us is essentially that, you know, resource allocation is a zero sum game. And so the resources you allocate to A are just no longer allocatable to B. And so my mental model of how you should like play this is basically to think of your own focus like you're the eye of Sauron, right? It's extremely powerful and it can kind of look anywhere. It can like do all sorts of things, but it can really only be focused on one thing at a time. And that's its big weakness. And this means to be effective as this eye of Sauron, you have to be very thoughtful about where you're looking at any one time because you can really only do one thing at a time and the cost of switching that focus is very high. And so while it may feel productive to try and do multiple things at the same time, usually it just means expending more resources on things that don't matter, whether that's just because, you know, you're focusing on not the top things in the power rule, um, but also because there's just implicit overhead and context switching. And because this stuff is finite, it means that it's almost always at the expense of things that are important. Okay, and the third observation is that busy is bad, actually. And so I think a lot of productivity ideas are about doing things more efficiently. And I think this is generally good, but often this leads to its own pitfalls. And that is just doing more things overall. And again, you know, this makes sense. It feels very productive and like it's a positive, but given the previous two observations, actually is largely not useful because just doing more things often means doing more things that are not that useful. Um, so your ROI, you know, just goes down and often leads to unexpected implicit focus splitting, especially in software engineering. It's like, oh, I just have this stupid little bug. I'm just gonna do some cleanup. I'm just gonna do some refactoring. And then all of a sudden it leads to like, wait, that was a load bearing bug or, oh my gosh, now there's like these other downstream things I need to do. And so these very simple, non-important things that you think you can just like bang out real fast, end up taking a lot more focus than you thought. And so now that's coming at the expense of the things that were actually important in the first place. And I think the core misunderstanding of this is really the end goal. The end goal of productivity is not to do more things. 
It's to enable you to achieve more value, whatever that means to you. The less energy you focus on non-useful things, non-valuable things, the more you can focus on those things that are actually valuable to you. That's really the goal. And I think like over time, a focus on just doing more things, this kind of traditional productivity, if you will, is a great way to feel overwhelmed, tired, and eventually burn out. It may feel productive short-term, but is in no way to be productive long-term. And so the way I look at this is that rest is important, busy is bad, impactful is good. And so simply focus on the most important things and achieve greater productivity long-term. You might not beat out the people sprinting short-term, but in three months, you're gonna be in the exact same space as them. And then in six months, you're gonna be ahead of them because you didn't burn out. Now, another note um, that a lot of people might disagree with, but the way I see it is that it often means it's better to do nothing than to spend energy doing low impact things. So let's say you finished all your work early, you've got like an extra two hours, maybe I'll go work on that like um, stupid little thing uh, that'll be a quick fix, but often leads to not a quick fix and then ends up burning your you know, focus and resources um, later on that could have been put to something more impactful maybe the next day. And so instead, I think you should go have some time off to recharge and so that you have more energy available, you have more in your battery, for when actually impactful things come up like that fire that you didn't expect to happen at 5 p.m. on a Friday, hey, you have some, some battery in the tank, go, go use it for that instead. All right, on to my daily to-do list. So my to-do list tries to solve for these, tries to optimize for these observations by simply being short. It has a max of seven items. And I think this has several benefits. So the first is that it can only contain important things. I can only list a few things, so naturally it must be the most important. I think a lot of these to-do lists that have like infinite things, it makes you feel like you're keeping track of the most important things, but often what it ends up doing is like starving the most important things because it's easy to just pick up, you know, low impact, easy things first. And so if you can only list seven items, you know, it becomes pretty clear and usually causes anxiety if you know you're missing an important thing. And so naturally those things are just gonna bubble up to those things. And then because you only have those seven ones, it's easier to just focus on those important things as opposed to like doing that procrastination. Because again, you know, the procrastination stuff, the focus on just any work instead of the important things often comes at the expense of the actually important things. And so we wanna minimize that. By only having seven things, we don't have any of these distractions. We don't have anything unimportant listed, so we can just do those. And then finally, it allows me to save energy for the important things. So the way I look at it is once my list is done, I'm done. I don't have to do anything for the rest of the day. That is enough. And I think this has like several benefits. One, I think it's motivating because you're like, oh, this is all I have to do. I can visualize how I'm gonna do these things. And so you honestly get more stuff done faster because there's like a reward at the end of the tunnel, which is like, I'm done. And because it's only important things, you finish like all the important things that you had to do, which is better than most people who are just doing busy work, honestly. And then finally, because you're probably doing these things faster, you've already pushed the important things done and now you can just be done. You don't have to worry about anything. You recharge better, which means for the next day, the next block in the cycle, you have more energy in the tank to do that again. And so this is how I think long-term, it really turns into a very sustainable, impactful 3S system for productivity and impact. Okay, so what does this thing look like? So here's my daily to-do list. I basically just have like a Notion template um, and it has a reminder up here for like, uh, my morning ritual and my nightly ritual. But really these are the, the, the main things. And so it's organized by basically the big domains of my life. And these are the phases of the creation cycle, which is how I think about processes for like really all forms of creation, but also um, largely cycles of life. Um, and so that's why it, it's really how I organize things. And so what this really means for me is it helps me stay on top of the areas that I care about. I think other people have different ways of organizing their life of what's important to them. Um, but I think the big takeaway here is that it's organized by those big domains so that I'm always having them top of mind, making sure that I'm making progress or at least maintaining, you know, whatever those things are that, that value to me. So we can see the sections here. Um, and so what are those? So the first one is observe. We give it two things. And that's really about being in the world and connecting with friends. I'm like a big introvert um, and I would like, I'm like a cat. I would just like stay inside in my like dark little room here all day for weeks on end, um, but that's probably not healthy. So this is a reminder for me to like reach out to someone, go outside, you know, get some sun, 
that kind of thing because I need it. Many people probably don't need this, so your domain will probably be different. Then my biggest bucket is create. Um, and this is for work and projects. You can imagine on work days, it's like all gonna be work things. Um, but on like Saturday, Sundays, where I still do projects, it's probably mostly project things. And this is my biggest bucket because it's the thing that like I care most about, I value the most. Um, and so it gets the most items. And then finally, my reflect buckets um, has two items. And it's really about like maintenance, chores, things. This might be like finance. This might be like, I got to do laundry, kind of stuff like that, that are kind of daily to do's, but you don't want them to stack up. So just like do a few a day. Now I want to stress that this doesn't mean I'm only doing seven things per day. Most of my to do's are milestones or outcomes I want to achieve. And usually there's going to be multiple tasks within a milestone to accomplish that outcome. And I think, again, this is kind of where I'm trying to focus on what is the impact of what I'm doing, not necessarily the process. And so I try to stray away from busy work, filling up my to-do list, and instead focus on the outcomes that I want. And so some examples of this are like, you know, I have a daily exercise that I like to do, and it's not just going to be one exercise, right? Like you wouldn't go to the gym and just do curls or something. It's really a program that like fulfills the daily exercise requirement. You know, you're gonna hit several muscle groups, it's gonna be like time allotment, you're gonna have some sets and stuff. Like exercise is really an outcome and there's many like subtasks in there that you're doing, but it's implicit because you want the exercise outcome or milestone. For my projects, you know, it's usually not gonna be one task, but completing a milestone. So this might be like a user story or sometimes a group of user stories if there's like a, a project milestone that includes multiple of them. And so it's often not gonna be like one thing. It's not one PR, but what we're trying to accomplish is get this impact out there. And so it'll often be multiple PRs. It'll be like multiple talking to people, et cetera. But the goal is that one milestone. Same with reflect, you know, it's usually not one thing, but an outcome. So, you know, laundry, this is pretty small. So usually like a task-based things, but it does involve like, hey, bring it to the laundry people. All right, bring it back, go like fold it, stuff like that. It's just laundry, one item, but really it's an outcome. Or budgeting. Budgeting involves a lot of things like checking on all your bank statements, checking your you know, FICO score, budgeting for the next month, uh, moving any kind of money around to make sure that all expenses are covered. You know, it's not one thing, it's an outcome. Or finally, plan for month. You know, like this requires looking back on what you did your last month, looking what you want to do for the next month, kind of doing stuff like that. You know, it's not one thing, but it's one outcome. So hopefully that makes sense. But I, f I feel like I see this go wrong so many t so many times in like people's to-do lists or the little like apps or whatever, where they're focused on these tiny things that are like not actually working towards a useful outcome. And so it's just like busy instead of like impactful. And now of course there's other random things that our life's gonna throw at you that you just need to deal with. And so, you know, if it's small, I'll just do it directly. If it's important, I'll just add it to my to-do list. And then if it's not really any of those, I might just like schedule it for later, but that's for another time. But generally this is my to-do list and is like really seven items around 90% of the time, 90% of the days. Um, and so it rarely goes over. And if it does need to go over, like I'm adding to the to-do list, then that means it's very important. And so I'll usually bump something out um, that was maybe there earlier, but is no longer the most important thing. Okay, what productivity systems get wrong? So while we're on the topic of to-do lists and productivity systems at large, I wanted to touch on some things I see in a lot of productivity systems that I think are counterproductive. The main thing that we see in all of these is that they're wasting time, energy, focus on things that are not impactful. And this can come up in many ways, and so I'm just providing a few patterns I've seen that do this, that are very common in a lot of these systems that people use. And so the first one is like not having a prioritization system or having a prioritization system that like is not useful. Um, and so this often leads to spending a lot of effort working on non impactful things. And this is very similar to the build trap. It happens in so many engineering product organizations. And it's often because we're not focused on the actual impact to the customers, to the business. Instead, we're often focused on ego or leaderships or solutions. Um, that maybe aren't attached to an actual outcome. And so this is the build trap. We spend so much time and effort building some sort of thing, but it's not a solution to any problem. It doesn't capture any opportunity. And so it's just full waste. And this is that kind of thing of like, there's the power rule. Like this is something that's definitely like bottom 50% because you know, you spend all this effort and there's just no actual impact on the other side. Um, so yeah. The next one is like having a productivity system that organizes all work. And so again, this means a lot of effort and focus spent on things that are not impactful because it's kind of like um, like hoarding. It's like you have a bunch of stuff and it's not 
Most of it's not useful because of power law, but then you're spending time like organizing it, like moving the boxes around, like moving the stuff around, stacking things up, doing this. And it's like the incremental cost of one more item in the backlog isn't that much, but over time it just becomes huge. And it's like, why are we organizing all these things that we know we're never going to do? And so the thing I see this a lot all the time is like agile backlog grooming. It's like you go through and you look at everything that's old and it's like, you know, if it's old and we haven't seen it again, not useful. It's just not useful. I have a lot of other issues with agile, but you know, that's another post. Um, but if your productivity system gets worse, the more items you have in it, and you're going to have a lot of items of useless work, then that's, that's not good. You know, avoid that. The next is focusing on process over impact. So I think systems are really only as useful as they're impactful. And so if you keep refactoring your productivity system, then you're just refactoring the system, but not using it, that's not useful. Um, and also if you're blindly following a system, but you're not seeing impact on the other side, that's also not useful because what's the point of the system? And I see this a lot in various ways. So I see a lot of these like notion-based organizers um, and it's like cool to see what people are doing, but then people think this is like a panacea to actually doing the work and it's not, it's a tool to do the work. And so I think this focus on refactoring this stuff is just kind of a waste of time. Um, basically any agile system I've seen with the burndown chart is like not useful. Burndowns are the most useless thing I've ever seen. Um, and they take a lot of time and decisions are based off of them, but they're not connected to anything real. Um, and so I think this is a great kind of heuristic of like, is this process useful? A lot of those things are just not. And I did this a lot when I was younger, um, so I get it. But uh, overall, it's just it's just not that useful. The good thing is I think generally the way to resolve these um, kind of issues is pretty simple. And that's really just to focus on the impact you wanna have. So this might be personally, if you just wanna spend less time doing busy things and kind of more time on just being impactful, achieve more rest for yourself. Uh, it might be career wise, like you just want to do pretty good, get re good reviews and not have 60 hour weeks. As a business, it might be like, you know, we want to improve ROI. So maybe like use the people we have currently to have better outcomes rather than keeping on hiring people. And then we just like don't achieve any of our outcomes. You know, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, that's what you need to focus on. And the system should then follow to support that. If you do this, basically everything else falls into place. It's like much easier to, to figure out what's working and what's not. And the first thing that, that happens is it's very easy to prioritize. You know, the things that have the best impact ROI come first. Whatever it is you're trying to achieve, that's what you're looking at. Just focus on the things that do that. The next is it's really easy to organize. So the truth is the things that are impactful will come up again. And so if they don't come up again, they weren't actually that impactful. So you don't need to do this thing where you're reorganizing your list of infinite things, because again, most of those things are like not useful. And so you can actually just drop that step altogether. If something is impactful, it will come up again. And if it's one of the most impactful things, you will remember that because it's, you know, one of those three things that are actually useful to do. And again, I think this is akin to like mental hoarding, which is just bad. Like what is the impact of one additional item? It's low, but the problem is you have, you know, a thousand additional items now. So like actually the cost is high for, for no impact, for no usefulness. And then finally, it's very easy to shed useless process when you have this idea of what impact is. You know, if this thing is not helping your team, it's not solving a problem, it's not producing impact or helping you get more of that impact, then it's just wasteful. Just drop it. Next. So I've thought long and hard about my productivity systems and probably too much, honestly, probably wasted a lot of time thinking about this stuff. Um, but ultimately, I found that it all just comes down to impact which really is just, you know, achieving more of what you value, whatever that is. And so my to-do list is a 3S solution for turning that finding into something I can use every day. It won't work for everyone, but it works well for me. Find what works for you. It is going to be different for everyone. So the question for you is how do you organize your days? What systems do you employ to do this efficiently? If you like this post, you might also like how I plan my day as a senior software engineer, talking a little bit more about how I plan long-term and how I kind of back my way into what I should do shorter term both in days, but also hourly blocks. Might also be interested in escape the build trap the simple way, kind of ways to avoid this problem of building useless things, which seems to plague engineering orgs and teams uh, in every company I've seen. And finally, simple scalable systems, how to find 80-20 silver bullet solutions for any domain, and kind of how I think about building systems that are like actually useful long-term. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.